So I remember I got a text message from former Congressman Denver Riegelman. It may have been a day or two before January 6th, before they were going to do the whole electoral count. And um, he's like, I think it's going to be really bad. I don't know, maybe you should see if you should, if you can work from home. And be, me being kind of brushing it off and being like, nah, I got to go to work and uh, getting there. And I remember running into um, a source that I'm friendly with uh, on the Senate subway. I live a couple blocks from the Capitol. So walking to work, ran into them and kind of us both griping about how it was going to be a late day. We we're kind of a, uh, oh, wow, it's going to be a long one. And it, it uh, definitely worse day than I thought it was going to be initially, despite uh, I thought the worst of my day was going to be st being stuck there until 11, 12 at night as they were going through all of this objecting. But uh, yeah, so I um, were kind of getting there, going down to kind of the press room where I sat with M Mike and Scott and we're kind of trying to figure out a game plan on who should be covering what. And we're, so they were like, why don't you run up to the chamber? So I was up in the chamber. Um, Sure, I guess what time it was at that point that I got up there, but um, it's up there kind of writing up comments. Um, leadership was speaking. I think Steve Scalise had spoken. And then all of a sudden, I, I mean, I feel like I was getting text messages throughout the day of like, wow, the protests outside look uh, kind of intense and it's kind of brushed off. We'd seen protests at the Capitol before that were a little rowdy. And I mean, I think my entire career since I've been up there as an intern back in the day, you kind of think you're walking into a fortress and you never think that's going to, the, it could be breached, let alone by people that aren't like foreign adversaries who know what they're doing and just people that anyone could just go bash in a window and let tons of people into the Capitol. But uh, being up in the chamber, covering all of this, kind of we were doing the live blog that day. So kind of writing what's happening on the floor we're just typing and um, recording what it, whoever was speaking, typing it up, sending things in for the live blog quotes and kind of how things are developing throughout the day. And I just remember all of a sudden the door shutting and everybody seeing Capitol Police officers. And I mean, it, um, which I'd, I'd never seen before. And um, they were like, all right, everyone, um, the Capitol has been breached. But I mean, I think I want to say they galloped out twice. I'd have to, I mean, it's a little bit of a blur, but I, I remember at first being like, oh, maybe a few people got in, they managed to, I'm sure they'll get this under control quickly. And then it's starting to seem a lot more real. So it, um, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like all of a sudden it just kind of, you hear that like, you see the doors shut and I mean, it's just kind of this, I mean, I've been up in the chamber a million times and nobody's ever been like this is an unsafe situation we're closing out session they shut down all the doors started handing out gas masks and I, I mean even before that happened when they started to when they first closed all the doors and kind of gaveled out sitting in the chamber i just remember getting really nervous and i, I mean i'm not one to tear up or really I'm not a particularly emotional person but really getting kind of scared and having never seen that happen before i was sitting next to olivia beavers from politico and um my friend Melanie, who had been working at Politico, were kind of sitting right by me and were like, this is very strange. And um, all of a sudden, I mean, they're handing out gas masks. You don't ever expect that to happen. You know, you see these things, you see these drills, with staffers, and you never think you actually have to use these things. <laughs> but um, well, it was kind of like a, holy shit, this is actually real. They People really breached and been in there. And I mean, I guess somebody explained that there was tear gas outside and I remember there was someone, I forget which member it was on the floor, but you could kind of hear them saying, he, one of them had, had been in the military that was like kind of trying to tell everybody to breathe deeply in in the mass, just so like, if you don't, if you're, I guess if you're breathing shallow, like, yeah, shallowly, you can pass out because you're not getting enough oxygen. So like, I, I mean, I remember putting that on. I remember Christina who works at the, up in the press gallery, kind of being up next to me in the chamber and just kind of, I mean, you hear things. And I remember at one point, I want to say it was Congressman Phillips that just kind of screamed across the chamber at one point, this is your fault over on the Republican side and just kind of the chaos from in there on, I mean, just the overarching tension. And I kind of remember seeing people kind of 
scurrying out from a member standpoint. And I mean, I feel like it, I don't think I'd ever seen so many people. I mean, people that I wouldn't expect to look as terrified as they were. I mean, you see people in such a different capacity of just kind of like, kind of that moment of panic and how everybody's trying to rush out and everybody kind of trying to comfort each other. So all of a sudden they were kind of like everyone, you know, try and get on the floor. They kind of evacuated us all to the left-hand side of the chamber or um, the left-hand side of the chamber to kind of evacuate out. And we're all kind of, they were like, get into your seats and we're all kind of locked in there and you're in a gas mask. I was kind of ducked under a chair. I really uh, didn't know. It, it was almost scary because you could hear these noises and you could hear glass breaking, but you couldn't really tell if it was like a gunshot or Blunt, just kind of blunt force to a window or kind of, and I remember getting a text message from my mom at that point being like, are you okay? We're seeing this all on TV. And I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be okay, to be totally honest. And I mean, probably not, never something you want to text a parent, but um, or at that point, they eventually kind of got us all out of the chamber and right when you walked outside up on the third floor I remember looking to my right and there were just people with zip ties on the floor that were being arrested and I, I mean I mean it was definitely pretty jarring and they took us through the tunnels over to the safe room over in Longworth and I remember getting to the safe room and they wouldn't let us in they were like it's only members and staff allowed in here and I mean it's like where it's at located it's like ways and means rooms and on the first floor there, there's like a bunch of glass doors. I'm like, well, it's not exactly the most press friendly crowd outside. I really would prefer not to be like standing by these glass doors. Or I mean, I was pretty hysterical at that point. I've been crying at a gas mask I, uh, <laughs> all day, so, or not all day, for a while there. I kind of had the gas mask off at that point. But uh, I think one of the scariest things was getting to that room where they're letting everybody else in, where supposed to be kind of the safe area and being like, oh wait, no, we, you guys can't come in. And kind of expected more people to be like, no, let them in. But it, uh, I remember Ruben Gallego saw me as they wouldn't let us in. And he'd been somebody I've talked to as a source before and kind of knew pretty well. And he just kind of grabbed, grabbed me by the hand and was like, I'm not gonna let you stand out here and took me through his office. And I remember seeing Jody Arrington, who was another congressman. He's like, if you need to hide in my office, you can. Ruben took a group of us and uh, kind of locked us in there and we were there for hours. And I, honestly, I mean, eventually they found a place to vacate everybody else, but if it weren't for Ruben, I, I really don't know where they would have, what I would have done at that time. I mean, I was kind of hysterical at that point. I mean, I was terrified, you know, you never think something like that's going to happen. You think if there is something like that's, that's going to happen, there would be an organized plan on how to handle it, but clearly there wasn't. So being in Ruben's office for a long time and getting on the phone, uh, talking to Ian at one point, who was making sure I was okay and talking to my mom and just telling her I was all right. And, uh, but at that point, I mean, everything, there was still just like, you didn't know what was going to happen. You were locked in a room. I mean, outside of watching TV from there, it's, I mean, I mean, it was such, it was so chaotic. I, uh, you still didn't know whether you were totally safe or not. So I feel like there were, um, Kind of a group of reporters there, so we're all kind of talking. I feel like we're all kind of processing what we all just saw. And I remember looking out the window, and you could still kind, of, you could kind of see all the protesters from that were still outside from from where we were, just from out the window, and had the TV on. And I remember, um, I mean, obviously they had cable news going, so you kind of get a sense of what was happening. But I mean, I feel like what I saw was jarring but seeing a lot of it as it was happening on tv just from how many people were out there and i, I mean seeing the number of people that kind of were able to make their way in there being kind of shocking i remember texting with people from they were over on the senate side too just sources and kind of the chaos of just making sure everybody else that i knew was up there was a, were also safe and okay and had managed to kind of get to a spot where they weren't going to be in danger. I remember talking to one of my best friends called me who was in like a complete state of panic to just kind of try and calm me down where uh, I think I think um, a lot of us, I think spend a lot of time just texting family members, letting them know 
we were okay. And I remember we had like one phone charger for, uh, there were like, I mean, got that many journalists and everybody's trying to kind of get information into their bosses too, all kind of trying to switch off to make sure our phones were charged. And I remember just being like starving for a while too, because there wasn't much food <laughs> to uh, like some chips in the office. But yeah, it was a lot of, I mean, sitting, waiting, trying to figure out what was going to happen. So, I mean, uh, I think once we got to Ruben's office, it was, I mean, you still kind of didn't totally know what was happening or the extent of how many people could have been in the building at that point. So, I mean, I think there still were a lot of unknowns, but I mean, definitely felt safer than I did standing in the hallway, not knowing where they were going to put us. So it, um, yeah, at that point, I, I remember being kind of nervous and like looking out the window and then being like, should I even be looking out windows right now? Cause like protests receive, if there's anybody in here Maybe I should be like hanging out on the other end of the room, you know? <laughs> um, so wh at what point did things start to stabilize? Cause you said you went home at 2 a.m. So I assume you were there for the, the rest of the certification process afterwards or kind of like, how did it go? Like, what was the point where you got to get out of Gallego's office and kind of what was the rest of your night like? So I'm not sure what the exact time was that they finally let us out. But I remember kind of walking back down to the tunnels and running into a couple other reporters and texting some different members to try and see, because I feel like there was still some confusion over whether they were still even going to proceed that night or whether or not they were going to wait a day to kind of let things settle and, uh, and then continue. So I, I remember walking back over there and I'd left my laptop in the chamber. So had been trying to, uh, for my phone, kind of figure out what was happening and um, going back in and then them kind of regaveling in and kind of finishing everything up there. I mean, after a while, once they were able to kind of clear things out, I remember going back and kind of continuing the live blog after that. And I think leaving it like, I want to say I got out of there at like 2 a.m. and being really nervous on the walk home because at that point, I remember walking back with Mike Lillis and it just being really quiet and empty after they had kind of eerily so for being around the Capitol, there was always kind of some people nah, just kind of being nervous about that. Knowing that it could have been, I mean, people went through so much worse than I did that day. I mean, it was scary, but I came out pretty unscathed. But I mean, it's, uh, I mean, the amount of chaos and the amount of, I feel like the, the lack of preparation to handle something like that happening, I think was pretty shocking. I, um, I mean, I think now I would hope the Capitol, which I, I think they've taken a lot of strides to kind of make it more secure. But I mean, the fact they didn't have a any type of plan in a state of emergency of where to put press, I feel like was pretty shocking. I, um, but yeah, I mean, I feel like it is, I mean, watching the footage of other people and the violence and seeing what a lot of those people that, I mean, you, I, every day for years, I walk in, you chit chat with the Capitol Police officers going through security every morning, you become friends with them, you know, you see them in line for coffee and seeing what some of them went through and talking to them afterwards is, I mean, it's obviously upsetting. I feel like, I mean, those people put their lives in the line for all of us. And I mean, seeing what they went through is, I mean, it's hard. I mean, it was hard. definitely seeing some of those videos is hard to watch. And you walk in it, after seeing that, it, it's definitely kind of kind of eerie after having experienced that initially. Had, especially, you know, it's like all the fencing and everything that had gone up and it's having, I mean, I feel like the overall vibe there for months afterwards with the security and I mean, you had the National Guard there and you had, I, it, I mean, I think things were he much heavier for the months following that. And I, I mean, you could see it with members where there was just the tension between all the different parties there and resentment there between, I, I think it, it kind of changed, I, I mean, I feel like a lot of the dynamics in general changed up there. And, um, I mean, it was, as a reporter, it's interesting to try and kind of cover it afterwards when you were there and witnessed it. And I feel like it's kind of, 